Smiley led quite a short life during his existence as a chemical weapon sea creature hybrid. However, the one thing he did manage to achieve was subscribing to the Ground Line Review and unlocking regular One Piece content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. And here is a picture of Smiley after subscribing, making an ooh face at the sight of all of the new content now available to him. Hello and welcome to the Ground Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have quite possibly one of the most bizarre situations we have ever seen a Devil Fruit applied to, which in this case involves an examination of the Sarasara no Mi model axolotl. The Sarasara no Mi model axolotl is a Zoan type fruit that would give its theoretically human user the ability to transform into an axolotl as well as a human axolotl hybrid. And I say theoretically because we have not yet seen a human example using this fruit. And instead in the series, it was used by a creature known as Smiley and made its first appearance, of course, during the punk hazard arc. So as a typical Zoan fruit, this little guy has both a broad family as well as a specific model name, the latter of which speaks for itself. In regards to the initial portion of the name though, Sarasara is derived from the Japanese word for salamander, which is very simply salamander, because axolotls are actually a type of salamander, which I honestly did not know before it popped up in One Piece. So there you go, Echiro Oda providing another fantastic education there. As for the model though, I would like to point out that axolotl, like many words, does not translate very nicely into Japanese, like salamander does, because fun fact, in Japanese there is no X. So when taking an English word featuring the letter X, that sound needs to be improvised somehow. And in this case, we have landed on the word ahorotoru. So as a result, the English equivalent does end up being fairly straightforward, with Viz electing to translate it as the Sala Sala Fruit Axolotl model, which notably uses an L rather than an R, because in Japanese, L and R sounds are kind of interchangeable, although more accurately, the sounds are combined and it's this weird sort of strange mess at play, like an ear sound. But to properly connect it to the salamander roots, in English, becoming the Sala Sala Fruit is just fine. So we've got a very strange one here because as demonstrated in the series, this devil fruit was more of a scientific experiment by Caesar Clown in order to create a chemical weapon. So what has essentially happened is that Mr. Caesar Clown has used whatever super special technique Dr. Vegapunk found and imbued this Zoan fruit into a condensed blob of gas, resulting in the strangest axolotl this world has ever and probably will ever see. And that's a pretty big statement because these things are already pretty damn weird as is. Known commonly as the Mexican walking fish, I think it's first of all important to point out if it wasn't already already obvious that an axolotl is not a fish. It is an amphibian, although it is an aquatic dweller found primarily in freshwater lakes and ponds. And that is immediately interesting because this makes the Sarasara no Mi an example of a zoan type devil fruit that produces an aquatic animal, something that we have arguably never seen before. I mean, you could perhaps argue that the Kame Kame no Mi, consumed by Pecoms, is an aquatic fruit because it turns its user into a turtle. But at the same time, turtles are very, very capable of dwelling permanently on land, although they are referred to as tortoises. Axolotls, however, do not have this kind of special exception and they do live their entire lives in water and that is a big 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 problem when we're talking about the devil fruit world because obviously the biggest attracting factor of consuming a devil fruit is the user losing the ability to swim so this is the most massive red flag possible right here because even if this fruit were to be consumed by something that wasn't blow of poisonous gas then breathing may very well become impossible at the very least because axolotls do so through gills and cannot survive out of water however if the user of this fruit tries to use the full beast mode in water, then they will lose all mobility and end up like Jack after being wrecked by Zunisha, eternally stuck at the bottom of the ocean floor until someone comes along to rescue them. They would be able to breathe, of course, but not move in any way. And just to anyone out there who holds the belief that it is only sea water that affects Devil Fruit users, that is actually not true. As Oda has stated in the SBS of Volume 41, the Devil Fruit users are affected by all types of water, which becomes very problematic for them when bathing. So someone like Robin, who Oda displays bathing fairly often, does need to be very, very careful. And the user of the axolotl fruit would have no real way of invoking the large majority of their axolotl nature because they probably won't be able to breathe on land and they won't be able to function whatsoever in water. And there is an argument to be made that the human beast hybrid form of this devil fruit would not fare much better because it's all dependent on how much physically changes and what the breathing infrastructure becomes. At the very least, I can't see the human hybrid axolotl form benefiting the human user too much. Although maybe it can, but that's a pretty big maybe to be honest. And you know, if it isn't clear by now, I'm not entirely sold on this fruit at all. However, I will say that there is one very potential area of relevance to examine here, because fun fact, axolotls can regrow their limbs up to five times, allegedly. So if you were, say, Shanks and the user of this fruit, then you should be able to conjure up another arm just like that. So I think that is a surprisingly impressive benefit, albeit one that I don't know the average individual would have much need of. Well, you know what, actually, maybe after acquiring that power, your life would turn into a sort of Dragon Ball style situation. Because when you think about it, isn't it really, really weird that generally the only characters 
those who lose limbs are those who can easily regrow them. If you like looking back on it, Piccolo loses a limb at least once per arc, and then there are characters like Cell and Boo, all of whom can regenerate essentially infinitely. So I do feel like unlocking the ability to regenerate limbs in media actually puts you at a great disadvantage because it makes you roughly 1 million percent more likely to actually experience the pain of losing a limb. Of course, that's not relevant to reality in any way, shape or form, but just you keep that in mind when dwelling on the might of the axolotl. But for what it's worth, let's move on to how Smiley makes use of this devil fruit. And honestly, this feels weird to say, but Smiley is almost certainly one of, if not the most ideal user of the Sarasarami Marvel Axolotl. First of all, as previous explorations of objects imbued with zone powers, the fact that it grants Smiley life and some form of sentience is nothing short of miraculous. Plus, Smiley, due to its initial composition, also seems to be able to avoid any problem in regards to breathing on land via the fact that it is a gas blob, and so it never required that pesky mechanism of breathing anyway. But due to the combination of devil fruit and sheer blobbiness, Smiley has also been shown very capable of molding and transforming its body to suit varying situations, and it can even launch part of itself and retain sentience within those individual portions, which is actually incredibly cool, because it means that one super big Smiley could split itself down to hundreds, perhaps even thousands of smaller Smileys, and then do whatever it is it wants to do. I have no idea what Smiley's goals in life are, other than to subscribe to this channel, of course. But this ability is a very unexpected result of this strange combination. Unfortunately, though, Caesar had, and arguably still doesn't have any interest in life, and Smiley is one of the great tragedies of One Piece, because in the end, it was created for the purpose of being killed. Smiley serves as a glorified storage unit for Caesar's weapon, and when it consumed a deadly candy, Smiley's life came to an abrupt end, and hell on earth was spread across Punk Hazard. But something else I should also point out is that the Sarasaranami, model Axolotl, is one of the very few devil fruits that we have actually seen in its fruit form. And it was also one that gave us a glimpse into the mechanism of how devil fruits function. Because after Smiley's passing, the Sarasaranami reincarnated itself in the form of a strategically placed nearby apple, and assumedly Caesar was well aware of this interaction and planned it out so that he could reuse the fruit to create another Smiley. So as somewhat heartbreaking as it was to see the death of this very lethal creature, Smiley will always be remembered for contributing an answer to the puzzle that is devil fruits. And not only that, it's also a fruit that we may potentially see again in the future, although I don't think it's all that likely, because at the moment, the ultimate fate of the fruit was to be covered by the chemical weapon that Smiley became, and so it currently sits in the middle of absolutely nowhere on Punk Hazard, covered in the paralyzing ash, which, you know, I, I guess it could erode over time. But the real question mark here is why would anybody actually travel to Punk Hazard, much less explore it in enough depth to stumble upon the fruit? And if it is recovered, I imagine that it would be by the Marines, because I can't see pirates having a vested interest in the island, although perhaps the Revolutionary Army would. They, at the very least, are concerned with the goings-on of the world government, so who knows, they might be able to pick up a nice piece of fruit here, although I'm really not sure that they would want anybody eating it. So for now, this fruit still remains sitting all by its lonesome within the realm of Punk Hazard. And now to the obligatory awakening category, and I think the results of this awakening would be very simple. As with most Zoan fruits, it would just become a giant axolotl, which would probably be equally as useless as the rest of its forms for a human user. And the tricky thing to consider about the Sarasaranami is that if it were to be consumed by something that wasn't an object or a substance, and I believe it would actually be impossible to awaken, because while we don't understand the exact science of that process, it very clearly involves a mastery and escalation of base devil fruit powers. And for a fruit user who cannot access a large majority of their abilities, if they can indeed use any of them, then there is very little room for growth in that aspect. So really the only chance the world has to see an awakened Sara Sara Numi model axolotl would be in the form of something like Smiley. And I guess you would just have to hope that its basic instincts lead it down the path of awakening, which oh, I don't know, man. Axolotls are naturally incredibly placid and chilled creatures. So I don't think you'd be finding any of them who are truly keen to push themselves beyond that and into the realm of peak axolotl. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming an axolotl human thing. This isn't anything at all relevant, but it's something I enjoy because the word axolotl comes from the ancient Aztecs actually, who always have great names for everything. But in this case, axolotl translates into water dog, which simultaneously makes it sound far less creative, but also far more adorable. And furthermore, if you are still intent on consuming this fruit, then do keep in mind that the axolotl breeding ritual includes a funky dance. So if you do find yourself a partner, then you had better get to choreographing because your inner axolotl may feel the need to bust a move before getting down to business. And so where does this leave us? And I guess, oh boy. I think the conclusion for this one is fairly obvious. Don't eat this 
fruit. It would be a ridiculously stupid idea because pretty much all of your new abilities would be based in the realm of aquatics, which is a zone that you as a double fruit user will be permanently unable to access for the rest of your life. And yes, there is potential in a hybrid form and limb regeneration might be useful in some way depending on who you are and what you do. But in all honesty, this is almost certainly one of the worst double fruits in existence. And I feel bad that I have not considered it for either of my top five worst double fruits lists. So there is one fruit on each of those video lists that simply does not deserve to be there over this one. But I guess if you had the know-how and you wanted to imbue an object to become a weird axolotl pet friend, then that is probably the only decent use that this fruit has going for it. So it's a bit of a shame, but yes, this is almost certainly one of the few devil fruits in the series that you would not want to eat under any circumstances. And with that, we are going to commit the Sarasara no Mi model axolotl to the devil fruit encyclopedia. Next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to examine a much better fruit as we are heading back into Logia Town, population Monet, in order to cast our gaze upon the snow time fun that is the Yuki Yuki no Mi. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see some more videos like this, then please do go and check out my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.